it was an historic eight-goal victory for England last night as the Lionesses secured their place in the quarterfinals. But all starting 11 players and the five substitutes that came onto the pitch were all white. And that does point towards a lack of diversity in the women's game in England. This remark led to a huge backlash against the BBC. However, at grassroots level, young women who play here in East London agreed with those comments. I look at them and feel like that's not the team for me. Why so? Oh, well, evidently, if you look at the Lionesses team, no one there looks like me. <laughs> so I can't exactly relate to the team, other than the sense on the football scale where they're playing football, I like to play football too. But just looking at them, I can't relate. I feel like, well, from my own perspective, I feel like when you get to a certain age group or it gets to a point where it's hard, they look for a certain types of girls to fit, I don't know, whatever stigma it is that they have for football. So then for some of us, they feel like there's no point reaching that stage because they know they're not going to get to that level. Sarah and Nikel are very clear about what that type is. Blonde hair. White. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Tall. Yeah, That's slim, slender. Yeah. Why does this have to be a discussion that we're saying, why is it not happening? It should already just be kind of happening. Because if you're looking at football and looking at talent and whatever, that should come from anyone, regardless of what colour they are, where they come from. Do you think there'll ever be a black girl, sorry, from Hackney playing for England? We'd hope so. <laughs> We'd hope so. There could be, but it's just the way that the system works. The Football Association says it recognises the problem and is making positive steps to make changes. Deborah Nelson works with Football Beyond Borders, a grassroots charity that uses football to empower young people on and off the pitch. Despite recognising the issue of a lack of girls who look like her at the top end of the game, she's doing her bit to inspire her peers. For me, it's about yeah exposing them to individuals that have past, present, have been playing in the game that look like them and showing that, yeah, keeping them as, using them as the role models that we use in our slides, for example, in the classroom or, and like also just taking them to games and having those difficult conversations. Like I remember we took a group of girls to a game and the first thing one of the girls said was, there's no players of colour on this pitch. And I was like, everyone's like, oh, but are girls really noticing these things? Are they really talking about it? And yeah, they are talking about it. Deborah played when she was younger, but racism in the game, combined with a lack of support, made her walk away. The difficult interactions that I found myself in, for example, playing on a Sunday against all white teams and hearing monkey noises and then me having, calling it out and then being told that I needed to reserve my energy or I needed to act in a different manner because I was being a bit too outlandish and I think that moment there or I was like to being told that it never happened or we can discuss it at the end of the game. If you look at back at the England team, I don't know, five years ago to six years ago, it looked completely different and it's like I think even though if we do win, I think it now sparks another conversation of how have we got this far, how have we got to a point where it used to be very diverse, we were tapping into different um, backgrounds, different communities and now we're only tapping into one community of yeah, girls that can identify with the players on the pitch. England's first black manager was in charge when the squad was at its most diverse. So what's gone wrong? We, I guess, tried to um, professionalise the game without considering the impact, it, the negative impact it could have. And yes, I truly believe if you can see it, you can be it. And now I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done um, to ensure that young girls of the future can see, you know, black female players, black female commentators that are at the forefront of the game. Well, earlier I spoke to Baroness Sue Campbell, the director of women's football at the FA, and I began by asking what was her reaction to what happened on and off the pitch last night? Well, I think it, I've, the words I've used is it was a magical evening, I think. I think we were outstanding and, and the spectators, I don't think they've, I think some of them are probably still standing there actually. They didn't want to go home at all. It was a wonderful, enjoyable celebration of the best of sport. And how do you think the women's team have got here? Over the last six, seven years, we've had a very clear strategy. And one strand of that has been to make sure that we can compete effectively and well on the world stage. Uh, and and those, 
that takes time to build a high performance system. And um, I think that the, the final piece in the jigsaw was recruiting Serena, um, who, who is proving to be just an exceptional coach in terms of tactically, technically, but also an exceptional human being. Just brilliant with the players, built an incredible sense of togetherness, team. She's very special. And a lot of people obviously are talking about tactics, but they are talking, as you are now, in a sense, about characteristics, you know, that the women play with... They're courageous, they're brave, and they play with joy. Much is being made of the fact that the men's game has missed that for quite a long time. I mean, it, they yeah. are a confident team. And, and where has that come from? The manager, just the teamwork? They've been to lots of tournaments, they've played well, but always at that critical moment, just not quite have the confidence to play with the freedom that you've watched them play with last night, where, you know, the audacious back heel kick from Alicia Russo and, uh, and that wonderful lob from Frank Kirby. You know, those are players playing with freedom and fun and enjoyment and a strong sense of working together. You can see them working for each other across the pitch the whole time. It's, yeah, it's a wonderful example of what great teamwork looks like in sport or in life. Ian Wright would back you on all of those fronts, but he stopped for a moment yesterday, I thought very poignantly, to say this has to be a turning point in terms of making girls' women's football as much of a priority as the men's, but reaching all the girls in the country. Yeah, and he's, he's right. I mean, we, we set an ambition in our strategy in 2024, uh, between 2020 and 2024, um, to give equal opportunities for girls in schools and in clubs, which is not what we have at the moment, as, as, as the boys would have. We're working really hard on that. We're in over 12,000 schools. We want to be in all schools. And we're not, we're not doing this just because we want every girl to be a footballer. We're doing it because it's part of them experiencing the national game. And there's so many of the qualities that you see these, uh, these players demonstrating, you know, teamwork, that's all really important to our young people, particularly in a time of, you know, difficulty that, that we're in. But, I mean, you're fully aware, I know, of the issue of diversity and the disappointment that's been raised by former players like Anita Asante at the fact that um, the team was entirely white. Um, what has gone wrong there in the sense that the women's team 10 years ago seemed much more diverse? It's almost like it's gone backwards on that front while it's had all this yeah, great success. I, 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 we are very aware of that. Um, I think one of the big challenges we've had is that as we have... Um, built our centres of excellence because of a lack of financial resources. We've, we've literally had 34 of them across the country, our regional talent centres. So we're changing the bottom of our talent pathway. So we've introduced two new pieces of strategy. One is Discover My Talent, where we're working with people who are working in community groups to identify young women that have got talent and refer them to us. Because structure is important, but culture is important too, isn't it? And, and black and yeah. brown girls that we as a programme have been speaking to, they do feel sadness when they look at a team that has been phenomenally successful, but to them all looks exactly the same. And they look and they question, do I belong? Why am I not represented here? Well, there are three players in the squad who are representative of, of different minority groups. Very but, little, very uh, little playtime in this tournament, though. Yeah, well, that's that's you know, I mean, I think this is one of the big challenges, isn't it? When you're you want a team to win, you've got to play your best players. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be working to get greater diversity, and it doesn't mean we should be complacent about where we are. We're not. We are absolutely committed to getting it right. Cheeky final one, your prediction for the game, for the final? No, I'm not going to do one of those, but because Serena doesn't like me doing those, um, and she's the boss on that front. Uh, she, she would say we will be well prepared. We don't mind who it is because we'll have a plan. Uh, we'll go out, we'll try to make the nation proud, and we'll do our very best, and uh, let's hope that's good enough. Baroness Sue Campbell, thank you very much for talking to us today.